let's take a deeper look into strings and some string methods. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some string and string methods. So a string we have seen previously is just a collection of different characters. So we can have a sentence, for example, something like, it's a wonderful Java series. And hopefully that would be true. And we can then output, for example, that particular string by using system that out a print line and then just calling the sentence variable right here and if i were to run this then we would of course see in the run window right here it's a wonderful java series now what we can also do is we can also output for example the length of the string so system out print line of course the output and then i can say something like length is and then do this one and say sentence dot length and there you go so now i can actually print out the length of the string as well so if i run this you'll see the length is 29 and what you will find is that this is 29 characters long so that's actually pretty cool that we can also print this out and the idea is also we've seen this plus symbol used before of course as the addition operator However, when we use it with strings, it's actually called the concatenation operator. Now, that is a big word for a very simple idea, which is basically just taking two different things and putting them next to each other. So we're concatenating or, you know, sort of gluing together, we're putting next to each other two different strings, for example. So I could add here another string, and as long as there are pluses in between, I can do, for example, crazy things like put a minus in here, and then if someone you know, runs this, then they're going to be like, wait, the length is minus 29. That, that doesn't make any sense. So this is the concatenation operator. The plus there basically just returns a string with both strings put into one. So that's sort of the idea. And now there's some well fun things that we can do with some string methods. So we've not really talked about methods before. Methods are sort of, well, I would say that there you can call them on some things so for example we have the sentence and we've seen here the length right this is also a method the length method which returns just an integer the number of characters in that string and there are some well very cool methods for the strings in particular that we can call so we can just say system out print line and then for example we have shouting i call it a shouting it's not really necessary that but what we can do is for example we can say to uppercase and then take the one which doesn't have anything in the parentheses here and this will then turn the sentence here into uppercase. Well, what's important is, if I just duplicate this, I will duplicate this twice, because we also have whispering, of course, right? Where we turn this into a lowercase, once again, without anything in the parentheses, just double click and there you go. And then what we can do is we can just output the sentence here at the end, because of course, we're first of all saying, how long is this? And then we're saying, okay, make this shouting so everything uppercase and then everything lowercase so what we should see is we should see shouting everything uppercase whispering everything lowercase and then this should of course remain in lowercase right so everything should be at lowercase at the bottom and it isn't interesting well first of all let's take a look at this right shouting everything you know uppercase then everything lowercase and here it's just normal well that is very interesting here because when we call these methods you can see that they are actually returning a copy of that string. So they are not basically changing the sentence variable. They're making a new variable somewhere, you know, like behind the scenes. And that is then returned by this, basically this method call. So that's something to be, you know, sort of cognizant about. You really think about that. So this would be the well upper and lower case, right? And then there's of course a few more things that we can do. Um, changing strings around well what you sometimes need to do is you sometimes need to find well a particular thing inside of the sentence so first of all i'm going to copy this by Control c Control v and then i'm going to say for example something like the word java right i'm going to search for that word is found at position now you might be like wait you can find you know certain things of course we can say sentence dot index of and you can see i can either put in a you know, an integer, which would be the character actually, or I can put in a string. So I can just say Java. 
and this will then find the index, the first index of this Java, basically here. So we can just run this and we can see it's position 17. And just to be sure, we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now everyone's like, wait, but that's, that's not right. I have definitely counted correctly. No worries. Now, this is a very interesting thing simply because of the fact that a, in programming, we usually start to count at zero. Now, then it all, you know, it works, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And then the J here is the seventeenth character inside of the sentence here. Or rather the it's the eighteenth character, but it's the character with index seventeen. So that's sort of the idea. Sometimes can get a little bit confusing. Uh, that is something you just have to basically just uh, familiarize yourself with. That's sort of the idea. That's the index of where we can get the index of a particular string inside of that string itself. And then what we can also do is we can replace something in that string. That's, of course, pretty cool as well. Let's just uh, copy this over right here. And then what we'll just say is something like sentence.replace. So this is, of course, replace, where we can replace a character sequence Character sequence is pretty much simply a string. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but we're just going to think of this as a string. And then we replace the Java Java word with C sharp. And then everyone's going to be like, wait, what? And then it's a wonderful C sharp series. Well, that is not quite the case, although <laughs> they are very similar, right? So this is um, some really cool things that we've already done here. You know, getting the index, we replaced some stuff. We've made them upper and lower case. And now there's also uh, an interesting thing, which is the string S. We're just going to make a new string, which is going to be basically empty, right? You can see that this is pretty much empty. And what we can do is we have a Boolean B, or let's call this empty, which is um, S is empty, as you can see. So we can get a Boolean here, which just asks, hey, is this string empty? And what we can then do, of course, in this case, print this out, which we're just going to print out empty here. And what we'll, of course, find is that this is true because, well, the string is empty, right? You can see true, and this would be an empty string. As soon as we put something in there, it's no longer empty, right? As you can see, even a space here, that's false. It's, it's no longer empty. So that's very important to note as well. And then there's some more interesting things, well, in terms of the Booleans here. And that would be, one, first of all, starts with and ends with. So those are two very interesting methods as well. We're going to once again take this just system out here. I'm going to copy this twice. And so the first one, for example, I can say sentence dot and then say starts with. And you can see that this is basically the prefix I'm looking for. And the prefix I'm looking for is just an I because this starts with an I. And then let's just copy this one. So select this control C, control V. And then I'm just going to change this to ends with here. So then you're looking for a suffix, and I'm just going to say A. This is, of course, not true. We're ending here with a exclamation mark. But let's just see. So we should see true. So this starts with an I, and it does not end with an A. So this can be really useful as well. Something to keep in mind. Then there's also the contains, which is probably one of the most used uh, methods, I would say. But this is also very hard to say, you know, how, what is used more than what is used not as often. Fair enough, but, you know, contains is definitely used quite a lot. And this simply returns true if, if this string is anywhere inside of the string that we're calling, right? So sentence.contains Java. It could actually be fairly self-explanatory, right? We're just getting a Boolean back. And yeah, and this, of course, would also turn true, right? That should also make sense because, of course, Java is actually inside of there. We can also get the character at a particular position. Right, so let's just copy the entire thing here. And this is going to be called char at. And this is basically, well, it just gets a character at a particular position. So what we can do is 17. We already know, well, this one was 17. So we should get the J, if I'm not mistaken. So let's just call this. And there you go. There's this, there's the J. Because if I put in a zero here, then you will see I will get the I because once again, we actually start counting at zero. As you can see, that just makes some math, um, you know, behind the scenes a little bit easier. That's why we start counting at zero. And we will 
see this um, phenomenon, so to speak, a little bit later in a later tutorial as well. And then there's one more thing I wanted to show, and that's the substring. Usually, you know, at this point, we're starting to, you know, get into like interesting stuff when we, uh, you know, call sentence. You can see there's quite a few more things, of course, in here that you could uh, call. Um, at the end of the day, some of those might not be useful to you. However, you can just take a look at this as well, right? So just if you have a string variable somewhere, just type it in, right? And then put a dot next to it. And then you can see basically all of the methods that you might be able to call here and a substring. Well, what we are going to do is we're actually going to take this S string right here that we've already defined. And we're going to say sentence dot substring. And then we're just going to say 12. And we're just going to see what this outputs system out print line S. And then we're just going to run this. And this is a Riffle Java series. Well, isn't that Riffle? <laughs> I would say so. So basically the substring, you can also hover over this and usually you basically get, well, how this works. So you can see a substring of unhappy would return happy. So it basically just counts zero, one, and then it starts at this index right here. So what I could do is, for example, I could say, well, let's do 17 and then it should print out a Java series and exclamation mark. So as you can see, this is, these are some of the uh, string methods that can be useful. Usually string manipulation is, well, just something that you sort of have to deal with, you know, somewhat, sometimes, some of the time. Uh, and it's also just great to know, well, what your options are in terms of string manipulations and string methods. And what is really important here is that usually these return a copy. So this is why we had to save this in a new string because once again, sentence has not been changed. Like nowhere in this entire thing has sentence, the sentence variable has been changed. It always, just the methods that were called on this always returned a copy. Right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.